This video will discuss sampling distribution of a sample mean. We're going to talk about the differences in a sampling distribution and a population distribution, how to calculate the mean and standard deviation for a simple random sample, and then we're going to talk again about the central limit theorem and how we can use it to approximate sampling distributions. So I want to remind you that a statistic represents some summary of a sample. The parameter represents some population constant. An easy way to remember this is the letter S stands for a sample. The letter P stands for a population. Statistics are samples. Parameters are populations. And so as an example here, this team is measuring an understory of vegetation plot in a one square meter sample. They're going to use what they find in the sample to represent something about the population, say all the underserved vegetation across the forest. Remember the differences between samples and populations. In a sample, we know the mean and standard deviation from actual observations. And we denote these by X bar and S. For a population, the mean and standard deviation are the actual distribution, and these are represented by a density curve, and we denote these by mu and sigma, respectively. Generally, when we use Greek letters in statistics, we're referring to populations. When we use alphabetic letters, like X and S, we're talking about samples. So our sample means, then, um, are less variable than individual observations. And we might consider them more normal than individual observations. The graph here shows an example of the average visit lengths for trips to hospitals. The visit length observations here on the left are really spread out. The sample means of the visit lengths on the right are much less spread out. That is, we can say that the visit length observations are a skewed distribution, while the distributions of sample means are more normally distributed. And all we're doing here, you can think about this as a histogram of the visit lengths. So we can see that most of them are around, say, 50 to 60 minutes. Whereas the graph on the right shows the average length of 60 minutes, 60 visits. And those 60 visits were just chosen randomly. And now we can see this distribution here on the right looks quite a bit different from the individual observations that we see on the left. And so to calculate a sample mean of a simple random sample, well, again, it's just summing up all the x values and dividing by n. If a population has a mean, which we'll call mu, then mu is the mean of the distribution for each x sub i, or each observation x. So here we can say, well, we can basically replace x sub i with mu, because mu is the mean of the distribution for each of those observations. Well, just like we like to calculate means, we like to have some level of uh, variability around that mean. So we'll calculate the variance of the simple random sample. And here it's very similar. We're still going to be dividing by n. And we're going to sum up each of the variances for each x sub i. So you think about the variance for each observation. Sum them all up for the entire data set. Divide by n and square them because we're dealing with the variance. So then we can say that all of the variances are equal uh, because uh, x squared sub x1 uh, is the same as x squared sub x2. And so then what we get is the variance of a simple random sample is sigma squared divided by n. So we can say that this is smaller than the standard deviation of the population by a factor of uh, n. Some of the key points. The mean of x bar is the same as the mean of the population. The sample mean x bar 
is an unbiased estimator of the unknown population mean mu. The standard deviation of a statistic decreases in proportion to the square root of the sample size. And this is really the power of the square root over n that you see here in the denominator. And so then the standard deviation and also the variance would decrease as more and more samples are collected. So this gets us to the concept of the sampling distribution. If a population is normally distributed with some mean mu and standard deviation sigma, the sample mean x bar of n independent observations we represent by n with mu as the mean and sigma divided by n as the variance, or sorry, as the standard deviation. And so we can represent that in the graph here. Imagine we had all of the values of x bar which you're seeing on the x-axis, the mean of those values would be mu, and the variability would be sigma divided by the square root of n, or what we call the standard error of a data set. We touched on this concept earlier, but this is really the central limit theorem in action. You've got a population mean mu and a standard deviation sigma, if you take all of the possible sample sizes, you could calculate x bar for each sample. And then you could calculate the mean of that sampling distribution of x bar. And then you could calculate the standard error of that sampling distribution, which we represent by sigma divided by the square root of n, or the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. This is a remarkable fact in the statistics. As the sample size increases, the distribution of the sample means begins to look more and more like a normal distribution, like a bell-shaped distribution. What's really important about this is that when the sample is large enough, the distribution of the sample means is quite close to normal, and it doesn't matter what shape the population distribution has, as long as the population has a finite standard deviation. So we can say, although many population distributions are not normally distributed, the means of the samples are normally distributed or close to normally distributed. And this is really the foundation of the central limit theorem. Now we're going to look at an example of this where we look at the ages of wolves in Minnesota. And the key thing here is that as n increases, as we collect more information, the sampling distribution of y bar or x bar or whatever value you're using to notate the mean, it approaches a normal distribution and it doesn't matter what the population is. If we sample from that normal population, the sampling distribution of the mean is normal regardless of the size of n. And so this is a really important fact. It's easy to talk about it and to see figures, but an exercise will step you through actually looking at and viewing how the distributions change depending on the sample size at.